So as John said, uh, my name is Frances Seymour, and I have the pleasure of being the Director General of C4, based in Bogor. And my welcome today is actually on behalf of not just C4, but C4 and World Wildlife Fund, uh, Wei Wei F. And so smiling and waving there at the head table is Pa Efrancha. And uh, as many of you know, Efron is a member of the C4 Distinguished Alumni Association, of which there are several other members uh, in the room. Um, and just earlier this week, C4 and Weiwei F signed an MOU to more formalize our collaboration. And this luncheon is the first uh, evidence of that, uh, that, that new collaboration. C4 and, and Weiwei F share uh, several objectives, including a desire to reach out to the business community and have these discussions about sustainability, such as the one we're having today, and particularly in the context of RED, and uh, engage those business people who either have already made a commitment to sustainability or want to, to seek ways to improve their business through RED, or may be considering it and not yet convinced. And so uh, all are welcome to participate in the, the conversation. I'm very happy to see such a great crowd here today. I mean, we have uh, a really good representation from across the Jakarta-based diplomatic community. Um, we have people from both the Indonesian and the international business community. We've got people from NGOs. We've got people from academia. We've got people from the press. And so it's a, it's a great group to, to mix it up. Let me just say a little bit about C4, for those of you who may not know us very well. Um, you know, we do have a mandate to conduct uh, forestry research, and our, our our, our mandate is for global comparative research. So while we have our headquarters here in Indonesia, we do have staff scattered around the world and try to contextualize our research on what's going on, on globally. Um, and we have a table of publications there in the back of the room. So if you haven't stopped by on your way in, stop by on your way out and pick up some of the reports that we've done related to RED. But I think at an, uh, an event like this, it's important to put forward that we really do want our research to be useful. So what we want to do is identify, for example, where we may have research already on the shelf or already in hand that is helpful, in this case, but in particular to the business community, to help them understand you know, the broader context or what their role might be. And just to give you an example, we had a visit to the C4 campus a few weeks ago from a, a senior businessman who was interested in investing in in reforestation. And so he wanted to know, he wanted C4's advice on where, what species to plant and where to plant them. And we were able to share with him the results of our research, which suggested that actually the first question you need to be asking is, why was that land deforested in the first place? Because if you haven't solved that problem, just planting the right species there is not going to ensure that you get, a, you get a stand of forests in return. So that's the kind of utility that we would, we would like to provide. Um, but maybe um, more importantly, we want to make sure that our forward-looking research agenda is responsive to the questions at hand. And so through a conversation like this one, we want to get a sense of where the areas of disagreement may be, where there may be missing facts and analysis that we could provide that can help move an agenda like RADD forward. Now, this year is International Year of the Forests, in case you hadn't heard. And so C4 is doing a number of events uh, around the world, but also here in Indonesia, to try to take advantage of the visibility of International Year of the Forest to get some conversations going. And we're going to be working with the President's National uh, Red Task Force, as well as the Norwegian Embassy and the British Embassy and others, to put together a major event on September 27th, not only here in Jakarta, but in this very hotel um, to talk about the future of Indonesia's forests and contextualize that in the global arena of international trade and investment and, and what that means for Red Plus and, and the other competing land uses for Indonesia's forests. So pencil in, save the date for September 27th because you will all be welcome uh, at that event. Um, just a few more uh, thoughts before I um, turn it over to our, our distinguished speakers. Um, for the last day and a half, many of us, although I know not all of you, have been sitting in on the Business for Environment Summit that's been going on in this hotel. And we've heard a number of speakers talking about uh, the, the, context, the nexus between business and environment. 
And one of the things that I think four different speakers said yesterday was that business as usual is no longer an option. So I think we're clear on that. Um, but I think it still begs the question of whether the change away from business as usual um, is an opportunity or a threat for business. And so I think that's quite relevant to the question we've posed for this event, which is, you know, what does Red Plus mean for business? And over the last uh, day and a half listening to other speakers, speakers, I've pulled out sort of three types of issues that I think might be worth having our, our speakers address, but also um, all of you in, in discussion, is one is those opportunities where businesses might be able to synergize between meeting red objectives, and I think I disagree with the previous speaker, I think red is an objective, it's not just an approach, um, meeting red objectives uh, as well as being able to meet business objectives. So for example, you know, to what extent are there synergies in, you know, such mechanisms as certification or meeting international standards and access to capital? access to markets, increasing market share, getting a price premium. Um, we have people here who are particularly interested in the supply chain issue, you know, and how do we convince different actors in the supply chain that, you know, being more sustainable is, makes good business sense. And at the, the conference, we heard um, some speakers, such as Helen Clark yesterday, said, you know, the external market for products is changing. You know, the external market internationally is becoming sensitive um, to social and environmental issues, and business needs to change to meet that demand. On the other hand, we heard some speakers from the business community saying, well, actually, we've invested a lot in getting our timber from the Congo Basin certified, and we're not getting a price premium for it. So, you know, what's the reality here? And, and what do we need to do to make it financially attractive to take those options? Second set of issues is what I would characterize as where business can be a constituency for the reforms needed to support RED um, that are also in businesses' interests. And so, for me, it seems to me I hear again and again that what business wants is certainty. Business wants clarity. What are the rules of the game? Where is the land that can be developed? Just tell us what to do, tell us once, and we'll do it. And clearly, we don't have that situation. And so having, for example, um, the breathing space that a moratorium, for example, might give to sort out some of these issues might be something that progressive business could, could get behind as a way of leveling the playing field and meeting businesses' needs for clarity. A third set of issues are where maybe new public policy is necessary to align incentives. Um, one thing that happened yesterday was the President of Indonesia gave us a speech and, uh, as has already been mentioned by John, um, giving a clear signal that new development of palm oil and other land intensive businesses um, need to focus more on the already degraded lands rather than come at the expense of forests. But a later speaker, Gita Wiryawan, said, yes, but we need to socialize the costs of doing that. And it seems to me that that might be a research agenda for us to think about, well, what are those costs and who should pay them? So anyway, I just want to get some thoughts going about, you know, wh where is the conversation between, you know, what's in the interest of red, what's in the interest of business, and, and how do we get them to line up?